Good evening. So to begin the night, we're first going to start off with the acknowledgement of the country, and then that's going to be followed by a prayer. Then Lily will conclude by talking about the patron saint, St. John. We acknowledge the land and waterways of the Wiradjuri country. We acknowledge the custodians of the Wiradjuri country who still care for these lands and waterways. We acknowledge the Wiradjuri people and their ancestors. We acknowledge the elders past, present, and emerging. We are blessed to be gathered here on sacred land. We appreciate the fruitful gifts of inclusion and education. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, we pray that our children feel welcome in the school community. We pray that they are accepted in their entirety with all their gifts and talents. Lord, may you pour your love and compassion in our children as they learn to be disciples of Christ. May they enter a community that seeks life and truth in Christ and realize their potential for the betterment of society. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Holy Spirit. So as Sharon said before, I'm Lily, and I think as our first official roles um, as our captain in the, in the college, it's really exciting for us as well as the new young students we have here. We've all been in your spot before, so we know how nervous and exciting it is. So I'm just going to begin um, by talking a little bit about why St. John's is called St. John's and who our patron saint is. So St. John the Apostle was a teacher for the world, really. He was a teacher for the Jews, the Gentiles, um, the slaves, or the free. Um, he's represented by the Royal Eagle, which is known to gaze unblinkingly at the sun. It was his privilege to look um, upon the face of God and live by it. St. John understood and loved the word of God. His gospel appeals most directly to you as a young student and as well as the intellect. St. John, St. John's College has embraced the eagle as our symbol of ascension of the Lord. In honour of our patron saint, we as a school end our prayers with St. John the Apostle, in which the community responds, pray for us. So first of all, my name's Sharon, and this is Lily, as she said earlier. So she's my partner in crime, and we're going to be the captains going into 2019. Uh, and we will be your hosts for the evening as you can see. So first of all, I'd like to take the time tonight to thank the big band for their performance tonight. So. <clears throat> I'd like to thank everyone for being here tonight. This is a big step for many of you out there. The transition between U6 and high school is a big one. But hopefully tonight, um, the information you gather tonight will help you make that transition a little bit easier. So before we get into the midst of things, I'd like to point out some little things. So if you look to the left, we have the ladies' bathroom around the corner there, and the male's bathroom is on the right. So to start off the evening, I'd like to invite Kerry Morris, our school principal on stage, to give the principal's address. Thank you, Sharon. Welcome to the Year 7 2019 Information Evening. My name is Kerry Morris, as I've been introduced, and I'm the principal of St John's College. Now, I have been privileged to meet a number of our students and parents here tonight at interview. Some have siblings who are in older years and sort of know a little bit about the college, and others are first-timers coming through from our feeder schools and from schools around the region. So welcome to you all. I, off, I know that a lot of the Year 6 students are sitting there thinking, what is the college going to be like in 2019? What does high school offer me? So tonight, we are really celebrating together all of what we can offer you at St John's College. We offer uh, for all interests and all abilities. I'll be looking at, if you, I'll read to you a statement. This year I put together a prospectus. And I was trying to capture exactly who we are as a college. 
it states that we strive to provide a learning environment that empowers students to be inspired, challenged and supported to become successful global citizens with a true sense of self-worth, which is most important as young people grow. The end result, of course, is we would like to have students that in the 21st century can be successful as local, national and global citizens. Tonight, you'll be introduced to the many opportunities the college has to offer. Sport. Now, sport is really, you could see from the photos, very big at the college, at a college level, at a diocesan level, at a state level, and at all schools, national level. So we are providing many, many different types of sport. Academic growth and development, obviously we're a school. We have an academic focus, but at all levels of ability, so that we're here to support students to grow and develop so that every student can reach their potential. And this is not just words. We do have structures in place to actually help, help those students reach their potential. Spiritual, we're a Catholic school. We have lots of spiritual experiences for students to develop their relationship with God through re retreats, through liturgies, through Catholic studies, studying of Catholicism, community service opportunities, joining the CSYMA, that's the Catholic Students Youth Ministry Association, leadership opportunities, joining the Student Representative Council. Now, Year 7, we have four representatives from Year 7 on the Student Representative Council. And cultural inspiration. You've witnessed our big band. We also have a big concert band. We have a strings ensemble, you have seen some photos. We have a choir, we have a marching band, which you may have seen on Anzac Day in the past. We have drama performances, we have musical productions, visual art exhibitions. St John's College is known for the exceptional talent, talent in our visual arts faculty. And also tonight, I'm very happy to say, we have this cultural exchange with our sister school in Indonesia. We have a close relationship. There's a banner sitting up there. And we've been now, since 2011, actually working with that school in Java in the city of Chiligong. And tonight we actually are fortunate to have with us on their visit to the school, the principal of the school, Hanny, and um, she's going to speak to you a bit later. And I'll invite her to talk to you after we give you a very short video because that's another part of the journey that we offer to all these incoming Year 6 students. Currently at the moment we have uh, 17 students from Indonesia billeted through the school. I have two female teachers with me and uh, some two male teachers are billeted with some of our male staff. So it's fabulous opportunity. But before we have, uh, I invite Hanny to speak. Um, I firstly wanted to emphasise that the St John's College experience starts here, but this is only the beginning. It finishes with the HSC. We are a 7 to 12 comprehensive college. And you can see our beautiful captains behind me is what we demonstrate, the outcome of what we have at the college. And I'm very passionate about the college, as I myself am a student of the college many years ago. Secondly, um, we are excited to announce and um, we are going to be able to start building our new hall community uh, education hall for the college. Um, we've been meeting with the architects and uh, representatives from the Catholic Education Diocese of Bathurst and I have another meeting next week. It will be a hall to seat 1,300 uh, people with a flat floor and a mezzanine area, um, a breakout area, uh, kitchen facilities. What I'm excited about is parent engagement. We'll be able to sit together comfortably and view our musicals, our awards evenings, um, our liturgies. The whole school can go to mass together in a comfortable environment. 
Father Greg's quite excited about that too because we don't fit quite in the church when everybody is um, at school. We'll be able to have our Anzac liturgies there and many, many other um, celebrations. So I'm not sure who's going to put that up. Oh, I've got it right yeah. here. There we go. And that's just a concept diagram of what the front of the hall will look like. And actually, it's going to be built in the car park where a lot of you people are parked at the moment in front of the Human Movement Centre facing Sheraton Road. And that building will be demolished. That's a small um, CEO building. And the people or the staff there are going to be relocated to another building in town. But um, there'll be plenty of parking. There's going to be some parks behind it. And plus, we've got all the parks out here and out on the road. So we're very, very excited. And we're planning to have this completed by the beginning of 2020 and have our opening school mass. That was what we um, decided at our last meeting. So I'd like to now introduce Hanny, if she could come forward to have um, just speak to you about a little bit about her experience with the college and our sister school relationship. She's only very short and I'm very tall, so I'll see how we go. It's okay, nobody can see me. <laughs> okay. Thank you to the principal, Mrs. Kerry Morris, and uh, a very good evening, everyone. I'm very grateful to be able to be here again and to stand up uh, in front of you all after our last visits in 2014. On behalf of my students and my teachers, I would like to say thank you for the very warm welcome from all of you from the principal, from uh, the parents, the host families, teachers, students, and also uh, staff. Uh, I have to read. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried I forget the words, so I'm sorry. I have to read some uh, sentence. Uh, the sister schools program uh, between our school in Tilagon and uh, St. John's uh, Dabo, St. John's College Dabo, uh, has been going for about, from, uh, yeah, eight years, already eight years. And our last uh, visit, uh, this is our third visit for, my, for me. Uh, if, uh, the first visit is 2011, and then 2014, 2016, and today, 2019. And St. John's Dabo, uh, last visit was 2015. And uh, our last visit was really, really a uh, very wonderful and memorable experience for us. Uh, we have learned many things. Uh, that's why, why we are always happy to be back to Dabo. Uh, we have learned many things in terms of academic uh, activities, uh, cultures, language, and also friendships that I believe enrich us as uh, a better human beings. And of course, we would love to welcome you, uh, teachers, students, to our country, country, to Indonesia, to our school. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, I lost my word. <laughs> yeah, uh, we would love to welcome St. John's Double teachers and students to visit our school in Indonesia in return. So we have uh, many things in our Indonesia. We have uh, lovely uh, places to visit, many foods to taste, and. Uh, many uh, unique culture to see. So once again, we would love to see you, to have you in our lovely uh, country. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Hanny. Um, I've been over and stayed with Hanny in Indonesia and the people are just beautiful. And so this is just an opportunity that your students or your uh, sons and daughters could have um, to join that um, exchange program. So enjoy the night and again, welcome and welcome to our community. Um, and I'm really looking forward to sharing the journey with you as your sons and daughters move through and grow into what I'm sure go are going to be the most wonderful young adults in the future. So all the very best. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Morris, for that beautiful speech. Now we have Mr. Dunn and the band with one more piece, so over to them. What a wonderful performance. So now moving on with the night. 
So obviously the transition from leaders of a school into the youngest year group of a school may be overwhelming. But as, we, as I said earlier, we're here to help you ease some of those butterflies. So we've put together a little clip to answer some of those questions you may have and give you all a little heads up on what you may be in for on your big journey. Making new friends and getting a good canteen. The highlight for me was probably making new friends and learning a new language. Making new friends. Highlight of Year 7 was all of the sporting opportunities. Being part of so many sporting events and making new friends. Woodwork with Mr Burden. Music with Mrs Burden. Representing the school on ag trips. To me, the highlights of Year 7 are the meeting new friends and trying out different tech classes. The biggest challenge of Year 7 is adjusting to the new timetable and meeting new people. The biggest challenge of Year 7 is adjusting to all the changes like having different teachers, different classes and different people around you. The biggest challenge of Year 7 is remembering everything and all the important dates. Meeting new and talented people, I didn't think anyone was going to be so different than in primary school. Learning a new language. <laughs> the biggest challenge of Year 7 is having to do all the affirmative tasks during the year. The biggest challenge of Year 7 is probably the, as all the assignments and getting to know everybody. The biggest challenge for me in Year 7 was probably learning a new language. The biggest challenge for me in Year 7 was probably studying. My biggest challenge of Year 7 was organising everything. Make sure you be very organised with your work and your uniform. <laughs> Take every opportunity that comes your way. Get to the canteen line quick. Don't spend all your money at the canteen. My advice to incoming Year 7 students is don't annoy your teachers and don't get a boyfriend or girlfriend because it creates way too much drama. Stress less. Don't pack things in your bag that you don't need because your shoulders will get sore. My advice to incoming Year 7 students is don't pro procrastinate. Advice to incoming Year 7 is be open-minded and take every opportunity you have. Don't get on the teacher's nerves. My advice to incoming Year 7s would be to be prepared for changes. My biggest advice would be to stay yourself. There is no need to change, everyone is special, and you need to accept yourself for who you are. If you're happy with yourself, don't pretend to be someone else. You should just relax and enjoy your time here because it's definitely the best time of your life. You don't stress, Year 7s not even that bad. My advice to incoming Year 7s is don't stress out if you are unprepared for a test, just try your hardest. Don't stress about the work coming and always study. Stress less, it's going to be fine. Um, don't be nervous or freak out. I would like to introduce Mr. Mark Scullard, the very wonderful curriculum coordinator that as seniors I think we have grown to know and love. Um, he will be talking and discussing our focus on learning at the college and he'll be doing a quick overview of the college website and how to navigate and interact with it. Thank you Lillian, welcome everyone. So I'd like just to give a, uh, a brief overview of our curriculum. There are our six core subjects. As you would realise, um, literacy and numeracy form a very, very strong focus at our school. We're passionate about our students building a really strong foundation and challenging them, not just to learn the basics, but to challenge them to improve themselves all the time. Why is that important? If you don't have those skills, you can't grow and work with the other subjects. When you leave school, you don't have those basic skills. So it's all about building a foundation to start with, particularly in our literacy and numeracy. Our uh, junior English coordinator, Mrs Ryan, and the uh, junior English teachers 
have actually revised our in whole English structure over the last two years to make it much more engaging and to make it much more challenging for, for students at all levels. It's really paying, paying off now and it's an absolute bonus and we're really proud of how we're actually moving in our literacy and numeracy. Obviously you need those skills in science, you need those skills when you go to PDHPE to actually apply them. But what I'd like to do now is just look at a few little different things. What are the main differences? You would have heard a couple of students there talk about their challenges. One of the challenges we find when we first start is moving from room to room. I'll guarantee some of you here will get lost in your first couple of days. You'll go to student services or you'll ask a senior, say, where is this room? And you'll get plenty of help. Okay, don't worry about that. Why did I bring that up? Because the reason you move from room to room is because we have a specialist teachers and obviously specialist setups in different rooms. So when we talk about building that really strong literacy and numeracy foundation, we actually get to use it in lots of different places. So we have a really broad curriculum at St John's. So what I'd like you to do is take you through and have a look at some of the different curriculum aspects that we actually can work through. So we've got ag, okay? Girls love the chooks, and if, if when you're moving through this, think about how they use, how you could actually use maths, literacy, and numeracy through the different activities. Got the year seven boys uh, putting the sheep in. Obviously, with the sheep, they do a lot of measuring, applying all their mathematical concepts. Then they're actually developing graphs and they're writing reports. Now they start off pretty simply, and they do it. They use a lot of um, electronics to start with. With our tech mandatory next year too, obviously we, we're moving more towards um, a digital component and a coding component, and this will be integrated with the practical aspects. Technology textiles, once again, some pretty good looking fellas there. Once again, think about how we actually have to order the materials, how they've actually got to calculate what they need putting those skills to test. When I took that photo, he was dead set adamant that he wasn't to show his mum. Okay, just, you, just fine motor skills, getting in there and doing things differently. It may sound silly, but when you leave home, to have those simple skills of just repairing your clothes instead of using a staple to take your hem up, actually staple, putting together, putting a new button on, etc. fine motor skills. And notice they're all smiling too because they're enjoying themselves. It's all practically based. Okay, so that's our Year 7 textiles and that's just one of the components of it. Food tech, obviously if you, you need to be able to feed yourself. So we've got some budding cooks here. They're cooking tacos and nachos. That's how it turned out. It actually looked all right. I actually, actually hung around and um, had a bit of a, a meal with them, which was really nice. It's lovely going around to your seven rooms because you actually get to catch up. They love sitting down with you and they love uh, sharing. And you'll see that in the music part next. So obviously uh, one part of cooking is also the eating. So that's one big aspect. And it's not just the eating. They actually have to, when they, I actually came in and took these a little bit quickly, but they actually set the tables up properly. They have to actually put table decorations in. They have to go through that whole process. So it's not just a case of getting in, putting the ingredients in, it's measuring them out. They make their own cookbooks. In case of using communication skills, obviously the good part is getting to eat it. And then they move along to this part. Yes, there's no um, dishwashers. They have to actually wash up as well. I love how the uh, one watching is smiling and the one washing up is not real happy. So timber and metal. In terms of timber and metal, one of the things here is we actually are moving uh, more towards coding. So we're going to be integrating coding aspects, aspects particularly in Year 7 with our timber and metal parts. So these guys are uh, at the currently making a clock and this will actually change a little bit next year. So they get to move around, they get to go to the workshops, they get to use different power tools, different hand tools, uh, with the assistance of specialist teachers. So languages, obviously French. And Japanese, they're the two languages that we 
uh, work through with Year 7 as part of the mandatory component. Now, one of the things about languages, it's not just about learning simple phrases in the language, it's learning about the culture as well. And as always, food becomes a big aspect. So one of the things they do in Japanese and French is they'll develop cookbooks and they'll actually write, try and write little bits in French, they'll write little bits in English and they'll put those all together. And uh, that's what they're doing at the moment, making different cookbooks and they're actually quite creative about how they actually do it as well. So once again, putting all those different skills to work, creativity involved with it, and they actually do a little bit of cooking in, uh, in French and Japanese as well. Visual arts. You may have seen as you walked in uh, some very strange looking, um, I wouldn't call them teddy bears, strange sort of creatures hanging on the wall. Uh, they're following the surrealism form of art. So what they actually do is they bring in an old uh, stuffed toy, they throw them into a container, they pull them out, pull them apart and share them around. So it's looking at that sort of surrealism in art and then they investigate in that area. They also have to do the drawings behind it. Okay, You see some pretty weird and wonderful things. But it's about getting that creative theme out. It's really interesting how that creative theme, once you get it physically, it actually starts to come through in the foundations of writing as well because, the, because you're getting your mind looking at different things, you're using a different perspective to look at areas. It's a bit of, yeah, there's the interesting one. And that's... That reminds me of a very sad movie, that one. So it's about that creativity. It's, not, it's about getting a foundation in literacy and numeracy and applying those skills, but also looking at the curriculum from a much broader perspective. Music, a bit of a treat for the end of this one. So I actually managed to uh, get in. They had just, they've been learning a piece for about three periods. So um, I went into Year 7 uh, Music which was really good fun. Mucked around them for a while with the teacher. And then uh, I asked them, I challenged them, and asked them to put on a little bit of a, uh, a concert for me. It's only about 20 seconds long, and I don't know if they rival the big band, but uh, they've been working on this for about three or four periods, so this is what they came up with. Oh, well, where is it? So the curriculum is broad and, and we're trying to engage everyone. We really want people to find their niche, we really want people to enjoy themselves, and we really want people to learn. The more you engage, the more you learn, the better person you become as well. Okay? I'd like to finish off, just, well, I'm going to have to duck down to the computer just to actually show you a little bit just about the website. So excuse me, let's bring this down. Sorry about the noise. Okay, if you just type in, obviously, some Johns into the website, I'm just going to hyperlink this through. There it is. Okay, so that's our website. Some of you probably would have been to it before. The, uh, the aspect I want to show you is in here. Okay, so we actually have a different tab set up for each year group. And with our year seven, if we go down through here, Oh, sorry. Sorry, I just had to duplicate it. Okay, so if we go down to Year 7, what it does is it has all the information that we try and get out to Year 7, basically, and it's obviously there for each year group. Does it come up? Just scroll down.
So if we have any PowerPoints or any information that come through, Mrs Fernie will actually put those up. They're all information about, um, from information from Year 7 this year. You're willing to, you can go and have a look at those already if you like. Okay, so it's information from this year. One of the things it has is all the different homeroom teachers. So your son and daughter will be in obviously a homeroom between uh, 7M to P. What we also do is we look at um, what they call success guides and learning guides. So for each subject, we actually put up the outcomes and the uh, success criteria about what they're actually trying to achieve, so what they're actually learning this semester and this term. And that's been fantastic because it gives you a direction about where you're going and where your child is going, so you can actually work with them. And we've found this to be exceptionally successful. I'll just scroll down to one more little part. Down the bottom we actually have a calendar and it's just for Year 7, we try and just put Year 7 information on it. So if things are coming up we'll actually put them on there. Okay? So we try and keep that as up to date as possible as well as our school calendar. So I would encourage you to actually get onto the website, have a look, basically play around with it, see what's in there. Obviously when we put our notes out etc they all go on there. Um, if you miss a note for an excursion, etc., they'll all go on there. So I just encourage you to get on there, look at the curriculum side, and look at all aspects of it. Just to, it's a really good communication process. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. All right. So here at the college, we're like a big family. And like every family, we have a head. So at the college, we have staff members who, who have dedicated roles to be the year coordinator of each year group. So they're like the mother or father figure of the year, I would like to say. So I'd like to invite onto stage Miss Jennifer Fernie. She will be your year coordinator for year seven. Thanks, Sharon. Um, I'd just like to echo um, Kerry's words earlier and to, to extend a, a really warm welcome um, into our community for all of our incoming Year 7 2019 students. Um, coming through the foyer, I saw lots of seasoned veterans amongst the parents, um, some of you returning for sort of second, third, fourth times, um, and it's lovely to re reconnect with those families and welcome those returning families also. So as Sharon said, my role here at the college is in pastoral care and I'm the Year 7 coordinator. So I actually work as part of a very dedicated and passionate pastoral care team here at the college. Um, and pastoral care is certainly something that I feel deeply passionate about and that I'm deeply invested in. Um, and one of the, the reasons for that is because I believe that our pastoral care structures and support systems um, are really what set us apart and it really cuts to the heart um, of what we, what we value and what we do as Catholic educators. So I'm already very excited about our 2019 cohort of Year 7 students. I've been out and about um, over the last six weeks in our main Catholic feeder schools, um, meeting and greeting those students uh, along with our um, wonderful college counsellors. And we've been running a program called Hit the Ground Running. And the thing that we conclude with is by just reminding the students that even though we're a very large community, we're a very supportive community. And we actually conclude the program with a brainstorm um, of all of the support networks and support structures that you have here at the college. And I'm actually going to test out some of our Year 6 students in the room and I'm going to ask you guys to raise your hand if you can tell me which area of the school you think might be up on the screen here. I can see it. Is that Lexi down the back? No? What are we looking at, Lexi? Correct. Well done. Good job. So this is student services. Yes. We're going to clap for Lexi. Well done. Thanks, Lexi. <laughs> 
so, so this is where I live, and this is really, I guess it's the, the doorway um, to the pastoral care team. And essentially what we say to the students is that this is potentially your most um, crucial uh, point of access for support here at the college. So we have two wonderful ladies, Mrs O'Malley and Mrs Davis, who man the desk at Student Services. Um, and this is where you guys come when you need anything uh, from a Band-Aid to a Panadol to a new timetable, seeking out lost property, or even uh, if you need to chat with me about some issues that you're having or you're seeking a counselling referral. So that's what our pastoral care building looks like. There I am, working hard. Um, so let me talk to you a little bit about what it is that I actually do here at the college. You know, it's easy to understand the role of an English teacher. We teach English. As maths teachers, we teach maths. But I guess in pastoral care, um, what we do is we help. Okay, that's the bottom line. We're here to help you as parents to navigate. You know, Mrs. Morris talked about the journey that we're sort of entering into. Um, and some of those seasoned veterans amongst the parents, I'm sure, could certainly testify uh, that high school and adolescence can be a bit of a, a rocky terrain um, in, in terms of what's coming up. There certainly are bumps along the road. And we in pastoral care um, are here to, to help you navigate um, those bumps, but also to celebrate with you um, the high points and the achievements. So essentially, in pastoral care, we look after the whole person. Okay, so it's about riding the highs and holding your hands um, through the lows. So if at any stage you have any questions, um, and you know, it can be as simple as what uniform does my child wear to school tomorrow? to something as complex as, you know, as a family, um, we're experiencing a period of loss or trauma at the moment, what can you do to help us out with that? Okay, if at any stage you have any queries or questions, um, please get in touch with me, and if I can't personally assist you or help you, um, then I can certainly refer you um, to the other staff within the college who might be able to assist you. So at the beginning of the year, I'm really focused on supporting students with their transition from primary school to high school. And for many of our incoming students, it's a difficult transition. For lots of them, it's the single biggest change that they would have experienced since kindergarten. And I think, you know, as parents and as staff, we sometimes underestimate the enormity um, of that transition. So a lot of my work in Term 1 and into Term 2 is really about supporting students, I guess, with coming to terms with the complexity and the dynamic nature um, of being here at the college and navigating their way around the campus, finding their way from one class to the next. Um, Organisation, diary management, just uh, staying on top of uh, assessment tasks, homework, knowing where they need to be and when they need to be there. Um, so transition management, I think, is something that is quite specialised um, and it's something that we are very, very keen uh, to help you guys work through in any way that we possibly can. And then moving through the year, I might be looking at things like monitoring attendance. Okay, so I will get in touch with parents for a whole range of different reasons. Okay. Sometimes, you know, I might be the person on the end of the phone um, who's interrupting your working day to have a conversation with you that might be difficult to hear in terms of some of the challenges um, that your child might encounter during their time um, in year seven. And even in those moments, I would ask you to remember that, as I said at the start, we are here to help. And we're here to really help you as parents and you as students to navigate the challenges, but also uh, to celebrate your achievements and to ride with you on those high points. I generally um, will contact parents by email, wherever possible. So I will really only ring you at work and interrupt you if I think it's a conversation that needs to be had um, there at that time. Um, otherwise, I'll usually drop you an email. So you have all, as part of the enrolment process, supplied the college with an email address. And we do ask you uh, just to check 
um, whatever your email account is that you have supplied us, every couple of days just to, just to um, keep on top of um, the correspondence that's coming through from the college. Kerry spoke earlier about parent parental engagement um, and a big part of that is us communicating with you as families. So we very much see our relationship with you as parents as a partnership. Okay, we're entering into a partnership with you. We're deeply invested um, in your children. And I think you've all seen here this evening, sitting behind me, um, the product that you know, we can generate through six years of education at St. John's. So it is a partnership and we do ask you um, to work with us in partnership in, I guess, achieving the best possible, not only learning outcomes, um, but personal outcomes for your child as well. So my role is quite dynamic. Um, it is quite varied, but that's probably one of the reasons that I love doing what I do so much. And I'm very student focused. So if there's an issue um, with a particular subject or with a teacher and you're not comfortable approaching that teacher directly, drop me an email, give me a call. I'm yet to encounter a problem that we cannot work through together in partnership for a positive resolution. So please don't hesitate. Part of my role is managing uniform and it's something I think that a lot of year seven students do struggle with, okay? It, it kind of, I guess, embodies um, the complexity and the dynamic nature of our context because students do have to manage their own uniform. So one thing I'll say to year seven students on the very first day is that when it comes to uniform, we don't blame our mums and we don't blame our dads when we arrive in the wrong uniform. So we are encouraging students to become quite self-directed um, and independent. So you as a parent will not necessarily be informed about which days children are required to wear sports uniform uh, and which days they're required to wear regular uniform because we're asking students to manage that themselves. So the PE staff will communicate with each um, class about which days that particular class is required to be in PE uniform. And essentially when they have practical lessons um, for PE, that's when they wear their PE uniform and that will vary uh, across each of the homerooms. Generally speaking, uh, the PE staff don't actually commence practical lessons till around about week three. So for the first couple of weeks, you will not have to worry about what uniform to wear. It's just the formal college uniform every day until those practical lessons are introduced. So let's talk about some of the um, expectations about our incoming cohort. So as I said, I've been out and about in the feeder schools. I've been involved in those enrolment interviews that Kerry spoke about earlier. And I already know a lot um, about the students that we have coming into the college next year. And I have to say, I'm really excited. Okay, they're extremely talented. Um, I've found the year six classrooms that I've spent time in to be warm and, and productive and lively and energetic places. And we've encountered you know, some very impressive young men and women in those classrooms. And I think overall, we've encountered um, what we already expect of students at our college. And that is caring, compassionate, young people. So I'm very excited about this cohort. Um, just so you're aware, we do aim to cap our classes at 25. And that is because most of our classes are practical in some element. So we've got, you know, science practice, for example. Students might be dealing with dangerous tools um, in some of their tech subjects or with science experiments. And that comes back to uniform, okay? We do need students to be wearing appropriate footwear, for example, from a WHS perspective. So each of our classes are capped at 25 students. It's important for the new families that you're aware that there is no streaming in year seven whatsoever. So each of the eight homerooms are mixed ability classes, okay? But within each subject, we have a lot of structures in place as part of our, our pedagogy and our curriculum to ensure that we're extending 
those students at the top end that might um, benefit from some enrichment, and also that we're supporting some of those students that might require additional support. And what we're always working hard on, as Mr Scullard said earlier, is engaging students in learning. I know for me as a parent, and my philosophy as a teacher, that engagement in learning um, is probably the single biggest thing in terms of successful learning outcomes in a classroom. So Mr Scullard has already ran through a lot of this information, um, but I'm just gonna ask you to refer, um, I guess for the next minute or so, to the last two dot points there. So, you know, I sort of began this evening by saying that our pastoral care structures and philosophies, I strongly believe, cuts to the heart of what we do here as Catholic educators. We are a Catholic school, and that means that we work hard with students when they make mistakes. Okay, we work hard with our students um, to assist them to grow and to learn from their mistakes. So be aware that as well as being a Catholic diocesan school and a non-selective school, we're a very inclusive school. So we do have special needs students integrated into our mainstream classrooms, and we do have students from all different backgrounds um, with you know, a range of ability, ability levels and behaviours um, across all of our classes. And again, that's part of our inclusive philosophy here at the college. What we do ask of students, and in fact what we expect of students, is that they achieve to their level. And that doesn't mean that everybody walks out of every subject with an A or a B. You know, for many students, um, achieving to that C level, meeting uh, competencies in terms of um, demonstration of the outcomes in each learning area is the best that they can do. And we want to support all students um, to achieve to their level. So when we talk about an academic focus, we're not talking um, about an A for every student or a B for every student. Okay, and I think, um, you know, Kerry articulated this very nicely at the beginning of the evening, that we support each student through an academic focus at their level um, to achieve to their potential. Okay, so again, part of my role is working with the Year 7 staff um, to ensure that our classrooms are places where academic focus is happening at all times and where learning is happening at all times. In terms of the Catholic ethos, we do run retreats every year, um, and I'm sure that Sharon and Lily would tell you that the retreat experiences are amongst the highlight um, in terms of, of the calendars um, for the academic year. So our Year 7 retreat will be held usually in about week three or week four, okay, very early in the year, and that also is the commencement of our peer support program. We ask students as part of our Hit the Ground Running program to identify what they're most worried about. And I think that a, a lot of students think that, you know, we stand at the gate on the first day and they come through the gate and we hand them a timetable and we say, have fun, off you go. Um, but that's not what happens at all. So I just want to communicate really clearly about what to expect um, on that very first day when you arrive with your shiny shoes and your neatly pressed uniforms. Uh, late January next year. So homeroom commences at 8.50. We start the year with a year group meeting and that is when students are advised of which homeroom they will be in. Uh, they then uh, move off into their homerooms and for the first two days of the year they work with their homeroom teachers from periods one to three on things like understanding the timetable, learning where their classrooms are. Okay, they will um, be advised uh, who their teachers are for each subject. We also do things like download electronic copies of textbooks onto USB drives for them at that time. So there will be no hard copy textbooks um, sent home at all anymore. Students are not required to lug heavy textbooks to and from school. They're all downloaded um, electronically and if they get lost, they can be accessed through the college website student resources link also. Okay. Um, there are no timetable classes until period four on the first day. 
Okay, and again, this is part of our pastoral care structures. You know, we want to alleviate stress and alleviate anxiety wherever possible by ensuring students are well informed before we send them off to class. Where to from here? There are a couple of things that you need to uh, organise and get on top of in order to be ready um, for school on that first day in 2019. And I guess the most obvious one is that you need to organise your uniform and your stationary requirements. Okay? I, you know, as a mother of primary school age children, I actually think it's easier um, in terms of, of high school and getting organised because we have our college shop and everything that you need is available for purchase from the college shop, whether it is pens, grid books for maths, specific calculators um, and all of the uniform, I uniform items from hats to socks and everything in between. So when you leave this evening, there will be um, an information pack and it is actually inside one of the bags from the college shop and that bag has the phone number for the college shop. There is a list of stationary items and you might opt to simply purchase the Year 7 book pack, okay, where our wonderful admin staff, led by Marie Carlo in the college shop, have put together everything that you need for Year 7 in one pack. So you can walk in, you can purchase the book pack, you can purchase your uniforms and you're good to go. Um, we recommend that you cover and label all of your books so that if they get lost, they usually find their way back to student services into lost property. Um, I was horrified. I think it was about week two of this year. Um, actually, it must have been later in the year, term two, when the students started wearing the jumpers. And I actually asked them all to show me their labels where they had their names on them. And very few of the students had their jumpers labelled. Um, and I actually went around with a permanent marker and wrote their names on all of their jumpers while they were working on, on computers. Because they are expensive items, um, but you know these are items also that are well made and that should see you through um, a number of, of winters and a number of years at the college. We have our Hit the Ground Running session for students who are from our non-Catholic uh, feeder schools or from our smaller Catholic feeder schools. Uh, that is happening on the 17th, sorry, the 6th of, no, that should say December, 6th of December, and you will have received some information about that um, via email, and most people have RSVP'd. So we're looking forward to, to welcoming those students to the college next Thursday um, to participate in that program. We then have our orientation morning on Monday, the 17th of December. Um, that will be running from 9.30 to 11.30, and it's a day that will actually be led by our college leaders. So it's another opportunity for you to attend the college, um, but this time, guys, you'll actually be walking around. There'll be a mini timetable, and you'll get some um, insight into what it's like to actually be sitting in a St. John's College classroom. The canteen features very heavily when it comes to, to questions um, with our year sixes. So on that orientation morning, we do supply recess. Everybody lines up at the canteen and gets that experience that some of those year seven boys talked about um, of getting to test out some of the canteen food. So we do supply um, recess on that day, but it is very essential, obviously, that you come dressed appropriately um, and that you must make sure that you've got a hat and sunscreen because it can be quite warm at that time of year, as you know. The travel arrangements are pretty much the same as they are in primary school. Okay, so the Dubbo Bus Lines website, you grab a bus pass and you're good to go. There's nothing different um, there at all. As I said, there'll be an information bag which you will collect on your way out this evening. Not quite yet, we're nearly, nearly there, but we've got a, a couple of more items for you before you leave, but on your way out, um, there is the information pack and essentially there's everything in there that you need. Okay, so students and parents, please review all of that information very carefully. 
I'm aware that I've just hit you with a lot of information. So if in the coming days or weeks you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to get in touch. So either um, by phone, um, just through the college phone number, um, or by email, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, I guess I'd like to finish up this evening just by thanking everyone um, for coming. Um, again, welcoming particularly our new families to the college. It is a big community, but I think that you'll find that we're a very warm and a very supportive community um, as well. We do look forward to our partnership um, with you as parents, and um, I'd particularly like to thank Lily and Sharon um, for coming in this evening and the staff that have given up their time to be here as well. So thank you very much, and I look forward to getting to know you all a little bit better um, in 2019. Yes. <laughs> So St John's not only recognises how important education and the academic side of school is, but the teachers and the students also know how fun it is to show your creative side, and I know all of you do have a little creative side in you. So uh, I'd like to introduce Mrs Alyssa Burden, who was my Year 8 drama teacher, and the current Year 9 drama class, and they're going to do a little drama skit on pastoral care um, at the college in a fun little way for you. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to the secret of Year 7's success. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Tonight, right here in this hall, we are going to help you discover what it takes to have success as the Year 7 student here at St John's College. Here's how it works. We're going to show you some scenarios and I'm going to see which of you future Year 7 students can work out which scenarios lead to Year 7 success and which ones don't. First up, we have Lorna and Harrison. They looked at their timetable and know that they don't have sport today. Therefore, they are wearing what we call the full school uniform. Lorna's skirt is an appropriate length. Her hair is neat and tidy. She is wearing one pair of earrings and they're not huge. <clears throat> Harrison is wearing his blue shirt, his grey shorts, his grey socks and his black shoes. So, future Year 7 students, do you think that Lorna and Harrison's example is one to follow if you want success? <laughs> Thank you, Harrison and Lorna. The college takes pride in its uniform and so should you. Next up is Josh. He has looked at his timetable and he has sports today, which means he should wear his sports uniform. Yellow short, yeah, sorry, yellow shirt, sports shorts, looking good, oh no, hold on a minute, something's wrong. Can anyone see? What is wrong here? Someone in the audience, I have my beautiful assistant giving out lollipops to someone that could tell me what is wrong. Down here with the cool shirt. What's wrong with his socks? Yes, over here, Bella. Okay, that's right. Josh is wearing black socks. They have a symbol on them. Now, some of you might think that Nike socks are cool. Some of you might think that black is close enough to blue, but you would be wrong. The school uniform specifically states blue socks, so you need to wear no other colour but well done. Thank you, Joshua. All right, next up I'm going to ask you to compare the pair. Here are two students lined up, ready to go into the classroom. Abby has her diary, her pencil case, and her books for class. Teddy has nothing. So kids, future year seven students, which one of these students is more likely to find success in year seven? Can anyone tell me down here? Abby is, well done, lollipop to you. All right, for another lollipop, who can tell me what it says to a teacher when you turn up to class without any of your equipment? 
Who can tell me? What does that say to the teacher? Anyone for a lollipop? Future Year 7 students down here? Unprepared. Lollipop over there. Anybody else? What does it say to the teacher over here in the maroon? Unorganised. Over here, Bella. What else does it say to the teacher? Over here. That you don't care. Anything else? Right down the back. That you're not ready to learn. I like it. Bella, you need to go over there. I'm sure he'll tell you which one he is. Over in the back. Make sure you put your hand up. Well done. That's exactly what it says. Okay, good. So, so far we have learnt the following secrets to success. Wear the right uniform on the right day. Wear the right socks. Bring your equipment to every single lesson. Moving on. The secret to success when it comes to mobile phones. I'm going to show you two students and the way they use their phone at school. You guys need to tell me which one you think will have more success in year seven. Student number one, Lorna, brings her phone to school so that she can contact her mum or dad when she needs to. She keeps it in her pocket and never looks at it during class. She still talks to her friends at recess and lunch rather than looking at her phone all the time. Student number two brings her phone to school and is on it all the time. She ignores her friends and teachers. She answers texts in class. She checks Facebook, Instagram and Snapchat all the time. She doesn't concentrate on what the teacher is saying because she's too busy on her phone. She argues with her teacher when she's asked to put it away. So, who can tell me which student is going to have more success in Year 7? Down the back with the hat. Lorna, well done, sir. There's a lollipop for you. Okay. Next up, we've got William's mistakes. Come on out here, William. William is either wearing or doing something. There's five things all together that William is wearing or doing that means success is not really in, on his path. Can someone tell me one thing that he's doing? Over here. He's got his earphones in. You're listening to music, you can't hear your teacher. There's the first one here in the white shirt, Bella. Number two. Um, how about down here? Probably black, was that the fifth one? Yes, black socks instead of blue. What, just here? He's wearing sneakers instead of black school shoes. What are we up to? And there's one more. Uh, over here in the white. Yes? He's on his phone. And there's one more, Kegas. He's just pointed it out. What is it? He's got rings on. Do boys or girls wear that many rings to school? Yes or no? No. And I'd like to point out that William dressed like this just for tonight. He didn't go to school like that today. <laughs> Did you, William? No. Okay, thank you, William. All right. All right. Next up, I need seven volunteers from the audience. You're going to have to come up on stage. Okay, one. Okay, have I only got seven? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got eight somehow, but we can work with that. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. Okay, I'm going to read out some ways of behaving at school and I want you to say either success or no success. Okay, and then we're going to ask the crowd if they think you're right. Are you ready? The first one. Coming to class on time. Success. Is he right? Disrupting other students. Not success. No success. Is she right? Keeping your hands off other people and their property. Success. Is she right? Yes. Putting rubbish in the bin. 
success. Is he right? Yeah. Arguing with teachers. No success. No success. Is he right? Yeah. Trying every day to be the best version of yourself. Success. Is he right? Yeah. Being involved in as many extracurricular activities as possible, like sport, band, choir, debating, science competitions, chess team, musical, ag shows, creative writing competitions. Success. Is she right? Yeah. And the last one, being a good person. Success. Is she right? Yeah. Give them a hand. Bella's got a lolly for you. Well done. So hopefully we have helped you understand the things that you can do that will lead you to being a successful St. John's College student and... Thanks everyone, good night. So I don't think that's a performance you're going to forget. So another round of applause for the Year 9 students coming in, Mrs Burton. So um, we know that sporting is a huge part of students' lives. Um, at the college, we understand that and they embrace it through our different sporting opportunities. Not only has the college participated in nationwide sporting events and placed pretty well, but they also take great pride in local sporting competitions. I would now like to introduce Mr. Dave McAllister, who will be discussing the many different sporting opportunities at the college. I brought my assistant with me today, so I don't know how much help he's gonna be. Um, all um, our relevant information about sport is going to be in the information pack. Um, it contains basically all the dates for 2019. Already we have our swimming carnival dates, our athletics carnival dates, and uh, also diocesan dates, which is the second level, if kids make it through. Uh, students are put in houses by random. Um, however, if your child comes from St John's Primary, or you have an older sibling at the college, you inherit that house. As we can see at the front of the stage there, the four house flags are currently up um, from our sports presentation assembly the other day. So those are the four colours for each of those founding houses. Uh, students at the college don't, don't have a sport day, as many of the primary school systems used to have. Instead, uh, students in years seven to 10 do physical education as part of the PDHB curriculum. This is equivalent to about an hour and a half a week. The PDHB teacher will inform each class when they at their practical days are and when to wear their sports uniform. Each year seven class will not have prac on the same day of the week. Uh, students will have the opportunity to nominate to trial for sporting teams at the start of 2019. This is done by me emailing all students a Google document through the college email system. Students nominate what sports they would like to trial in. The teachers who volunteer to coach or manage the sides will then put meeting times and trial dates through the college daily notices. The handbook highlights particular sports that we offer and there is quite a number of sports. The college runs carnivals for swimming, cross country and athletics. These are held in term one and term two respectively. The dates are found in the um, information pack. Students can qualify for the next level which is called the diocesan level and then the New South Wales CCC which is the combined Catholic colleges competition and then to all schools which is both state, government and independent school system. Um, thank you for your time. If there are any questions, um, you can forward an email to, um, to my address, which is d.mcallister at bth, stu, um, oh, sorry, no, stu, bth .catholic .edu .au, but that is all found on the college website. So thank you very much.
So artistic expression is a big part of college life here at St. John's College. As we saw earlier with the band's performance and Miss Burden's little creative dramatic impression. Um, with, and also with the college producing finest artworks around the state each year with the senior exhibits and art shows. So to talk about the creative opportunities and the creative opportunities we have available at the college, I'd like to invite Mr. Kirk Watts up on stage to give a little bit more insight. Thanks, Sharon. Uh, I'm Kirk Watts. I'm the Creative and Performing Arts Coordinator here, so that's art, drama and music. Um, I'll keep it brief, mainly because most of my material was stolen by others and Alyssa Burden is pretty hard to follow. Uh, if you're getting excited by drama, just hold your horses a little bit because you don't get to do that to year, year eight unless you go into the musical, which you will be able to audition for next year in year seven. The musical will be in 2020 and hopefully in our new hall. <laughs> Um, some of the things that we do outside of what you do in the classroom, uh, there's a lot of things in music, so you saw the big band before, Year 7 are welcome to try for the string ensemble, also for the concert band. Um, there's lots of students that come to the school already knowing a, uh, an instrument and playing an instrument outside of their schooling and doing private tuition. We encourage them to continue that. You can do that at the college. We have tutors come from the conservatorium and you can have one-on-one -on -one and sometimes small group tutorials with those trained professionals from the conservatorium during lesson time. Um, we also, as you saw in some of those images, have lots of class sets of variety of instruments, so keyboards, guitars, um, I want to say xylophones, but I know they're not xylophones, maybe they're glockenspiels, something like that, the ones that you hit, anyway. Um, so there's lots of different things that you can do with music there. Um, if you've seen recently the documentary on the ABC about music in schools and the education opportunities and benefits that you get from that, um, you'll see that it's really worth encouraging your children to maintain an instrument or pick up an instrument and to at least embrace what goes on in the classrooms. Um, as far as art goes, um, the art rooms are always open at lunchtime, so students are welcome to come and work on their projects that they're doing then. They're also welcome to maybe try something else that they're not doing in class and get the benefit of working around the older students who are doing elective art. The art teachers are there to help them during lunchtime as well. Uh, next year I'll also be starting up after school on one afternoon a week. Um, some extracurricular art for students who are interested in extending their abilities or maybe um, getting a bit of a better handle on some of the things that they're doing in class. So that will be voluntary, free of charge and for one hour, one afternoon a week. Um, that's about all I've got to offer. Thanks. So before we conclude the evening, me and Lily have a little reflection to give all of, to all of you. So today I'm not up here to tell you about how perfect our school is because I'm pretty sure the staff members have already done that. But what I'm here to do is to give you all a glimpse of my journey throughout, uh, over the years at St. John's College. Now, it would be a lie if I said I remember every part of my first year at St. John's. But I can surely, surely tell you all today that it was indeed overwhelming at first. But standing here today and looking back, I can definitely tell you I would have it no other way. In Year 7, I was a very academic student. I don't want to boast or anything, but yeah. Uh, as I started off year seven, I was always doing homework inside and worrying about every writing task or spelling test. But as the years went on, I found myself growing to appreciate the time I spent at school with my friends. I began to go along to carnivals and enjoy events outside of the classroom, like the athletics carnival and swimming carnival, just for example. And that's not because I wanted to, just because I enjoyed the time I spent outside with them. And before I knew it, I was joining in all my events. And to my surprise, I was starting to win a few of them as well. And now I stand here with three age championships under my belt. And I can for sure tell you that the experience is definitely not worth losing. So I'm here to tell you, grab every opportunity that you get. Nominate for student council. Nominate, go to the athletics carnival, the swimming carnival. Put your hand up for the musical. Every opportunity we offer here 
is something you will cherish for the rest of your life. Who even knows? Some of you might even be up here in the near future giving this same speech. Now, I can certainly tell, tell you all that me and Lily have both been given numerous opportunities to flourish and, and be nurtured in our own individual ways. We both stand here bef different people from what we were sitting down there years ago. High school is such a new and foreign experience and I think you'll agree that it's very exciting but it's also definitely a big scary thing. School is such a huge part of your life when you're young and it's the same when you're my age um, and it's very challenging. Sharon and I both know that more than anything and we're still both um, facing those challenges today. The college has taught me specifically to not deny those challenges but rather embrace what is set for me and, and grow from it. As much as Sharon and I would like to stand up here and say we are and always have been the perfect students, we really can't. But the college staff and programs has helped us, not only us, but every student, grow and mature into what I think not only your parents can be proud of, but you yourself. From the very beginning of our journey and your journey at St John's, we are encouraged to learn and develop and socialise, starting with the Year 7 retreat that was mentioned earlier before. This is where you are able to connect with your new cohort, make new friends, and also connect with your new Year 11 leaders who too are facing a very daunting new role. One of my favourite memories being at the college is probably the retreat from this year. The retreats are definitely something that you grow to appreciate. There are people you've grown up with for nearly 10 years in my case, and surprisingly you learn new things about them when you're both falling backwards off a 20 metre wall. Past the sporting, academic and cultural benefits that are offered, the college allows space for you to just grow as a person. When I was in Year 6, I was once told that the most exciting thing about Year 7 is the ability to make new friends. And no matter what you say or think, you will make new friends. You'll befri befriend new people and form relationships that you will always remember. Whether it is nearly sewing your finger in textiles or learning that you definitely don't have a career in carpentry, you learn new experiences and what better way to do it in, a, in, in an environment that will slowly but surely help you mature and learn not only about the world but yourself as a student. So after all the talking, I would like to thank you for coming tonight, thank all the teachers, the students and the parents. I hope all you students and parents especially feel a little bit more prepared and comfortable about your very exciting new year to come. I think all the staff and the leaders and really the whole school is really excited um, about seeing all the Year 7s in their new shiny new uniform with all their friends. And we are genuinely looking forward to seeing what the year to come shows for us. So thank you all for coming. And please don't forget to collect your information packet on the way out.